just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Packer Up, boys. We are back this week, powered by Bloke Beer. Get in here local. It's Friday. You're in the car on the home on the way home to work. You've been working all week. Make sure to stop in your local. Grab a case of Bloke Beer. The footy is on tonight. Footy all weekend. This is the beer of rugby league. So check our store locator on our website. We're in every celebrations in New South Wales and Queensland in ACT. We're in hundreds of stores across Queensland, New South Wales, ACT and Victoria. So put your postcode in, support your local, grab a case of Bloke Beer. Also, tonight, if you're in Cairns right now or close to Cairns, we will be at... Gilligan's for our last live show of our regional tour powered by Ringers Western. There's still merch available on Ringers Western website. Plus, on Monday, the second half of the drop is happening. Monday, I'm pretty sure, 6 p.m. Oh, sorry, 7 p.m. New South Wales time, 6 p.m. Queensland time. We've got first ever bloke trucker hats as well as um, some new country bloke shirts. So make sure to check that out, guys. But uh, I'm stoked because i got the great, the one, the only Sir Scopius here. The V. Yeah, you can, brother. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, brother. I appreciate it. Is this just a, a prop? Or can I crack No, can you can crack, crack that. that 100% boy? you can crack that. And uh, the and, midi's uh, been going wild too. And can right? I also come to Gilligan's with you? <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, you can. Yes, you can. I'm a bit intimidated because people have been talking to Gilligan's like it's bloody... It's like a... Oh, you've never been? Yeah, I've never been. Oh, sick. They're talking like it's Project X, the movie. Do you yeah. remember Project X? With the uh, Kid Cuddy, Day and Night yep, yep. song. That, one of the best high school movies of all time. All though. time. Yeah. And people are like, man, Gilligan's is crazy. I might have to walk in with a headgear and a mouth guard. Yeah, we, um, I went to Gilligan's uh, for a footy trip away, Premier League. Whoopsie. Um, this is back in the day. So this is, uh, my gang was like, the GOAT, Jeremy Lattimore. Oh, yeah. Um, Jimmy oh, yeah. Maloney. Little, oh, stop little it. Little Daniel Mortimer. Some Mitchell. real undercover dogs. Yeah, just undercover dogs. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we got, we, I, I actually fractured my foot. The week of, no, um, chucked a cast on, still flew up there. <laughs> for and, and, the, and the boys pushed me around in a trolley <laughs> all around Cairns for three days. <laughs> for resies. Yeah. And they let you go. Yeah, they weren't happy. But oh. I also wasn't on, actually, I hadn't even secured uh, a contract for at that point because it was straight after Mad Monday. We just played, finished playing the season. So. Yeah, I didn't have a contract, so I'm like, yeah, no one's holding me back. I just went. <laughs> and so it's what, a mad Monday, mad weekend? Yeah, mad weekend, like yep. footy trip away, put yeah. together. Mm. Um, yeah, so it was like the week after the season, and then we went, yeah, I feel like we went, it was, actually, we had a pretty big week, because we went to Newcastle, John O'Wright's place, and that's where I like fractured my foot. Oh, what'd you do? What were you doing? Uh, wrestling uh, Latte, Jeremy Lattimore at the front of uh, Fanny's. <laughs> They'll do it to you. They'll do it to you. <laughs> Stepped off the gutter, fractured my foot, oh. and it must have been a week later, actually, because that... I would because I went to hospital, um, seen our physio, then had to get the plaster around it. So it would have been the following week. What but, was the swelling like when you took it off? Yeah, it was awful. <laughs> like it was all bruised. It was. I did my fourth and fifth metatarsal, and I'm in the. Um, and we're in the cab and we're on the way home. We're heading back, and you can imagine what little Jimmy Maloney would be like in the, oh, in, in the back parrot. of the cab. So I'm sitting there going, "Boys, this is no good." Yeah, yeah, it's I'm, actually something. Yeah. The alcohol's starting to wear off. Like I'm in all sorts here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and Jimmy's going, settle down, mate. You know, stop <laughs> carrying on. And then so I went, we went to bed that night. I chucked some ice on it. Mm. We're in Newcastle. So, yeah, didn't even think, you know, going to hospital or seeing anyone. Woke up in the morning, <laughs> it's throbbing. <laughs> I go to the boys, We've got to, you've got to get me home. I've got to go straight to see our physio, Vic. Yep. She goes, I think you've broken it. <laughs> So, which is in my head, I was happy yep. that I wasn't carrying on. Oh yeah, so yeah, like yeah. Least, vindicated. You know, yeah, yeah, it was vindicated. I could yeah. tell Jimmy, like, no, nah, I did fracture it. Yeah, and you're a dog for fucking yeah. not having, not caring about me. Yeah, and then I, uh, I managed to get a contract missed with Parry in the end. I don't know how I got that in the end, actually, but uh, yeah, six months I missed. Um, Far, yeah, six months. Six months all up. Yeah, it just didn't heal properly because. You were getting I, after it. I was getting I'm a dog. <laughs> I'm a dog. You know, like I was, I was, I was in cans a week later pushing around Bro, on the trolley at Gilligan's. So. You know what's funny is like when you look back on some of the decisions you made as a younger player, you're like, you are an idiot. Like yeah. that's your career. You're yeah. a professional. But when you're young, you don't give a, you just want to get out there and get amongst it. Well, you train so hard, Kempi, mm. right? So, mm. you know, you go through the week to week and, uh, you know, people say, you know, footy players have got it easy, but those training sessions pre-seasons are hard. So when you get an opportunity to be a dog, yeah, you take advantage you of take it. You take massive advantage and, of it. And I, and I did. I, I 
when I look back on it now, like as yeah, everyone yeah, wi- wises up as they get older, mm. I definitely could have made more out of my career if I had um, had the attention to details, in particular the players have now. They're mm. so good, like yeah. chalk and cheese. They're so much it. better ed- educated than we yeah. were. We had no idea. We were just yeah. playing footy pretty much and ripping in. Nutrition and everything, not just yeah. alcohol, you know, yeah. like how they, you know, what they eat, um, yeah. hydration, everything, the minor details. Yeah. They're unbelievable yeah. now. Um, it's uh, like... Physios must just be like, seriously, these <laughs> idiots. Like, these are a bunch of Neanderthals. Yeah. Because the dumbest stuff we do. And also, the misconception I would love to dispel. People that think that, like, we rock up and you do fitness for two hours and you go home and that's what a preseason is. Yeah. No, no, it's, a full, it's literally, we do the same hours as a full-time job, some, sometimes more. So, you'll rock up at 6.30, even though training's not till 7.30. From yep. 6.30 till 7.30, you're stretching, you're doing your extras, like, passing, all that. Like, as a winger, yep, you go out mobility. and do pass off the deck, mobility, yep, everything. Extras. Then you're training for at least two to three hours, most likely three hours. You've got your you know, ball session, you've got your sprints and whatever. Then you'll go back to the club because you're usually training away from where the club is. You go back to the club, you'll have a feed, uh, you'll start stretching in that again. You will Then you'll start mobility for weights. Um, actually, it, it'll rotate. So whilst the backs are doing mobility for weights, uh, the forwards yep. may be doing like video session. It might session. even be like proper yoga or Pilates. Yeah. Like a full on proper a session. session. A where you're session. sweating up. Yeah. And uh, then you swap over. Then you swap over. Then you'll go in, you'll do your weights, get absolute like, not, not normal weights that you see down your local gym. Mm. Weights where you are fucking sweating your ring out and it's tough sesh. Um, and then after that, you'll probably have video. Yeah. Then you'll have a bit of massage and then you'll go home. Yeah. Like that. So you're at home at about... Like some of the Storm boys, they would go get in there at seven, they'd get home at about five o'clock, yeah. which is fine. I'm not complaining about it at yeah. all, like for sure. That was Parramatta for me because mm. we had the Storm system when Steve Kearney and Brad Arthur come, mm. uh, but Manly, we were home by one. One by, home by one? <laughs> so but you started at six, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Manly, okay. we, had the, we had the old school. Old days. school mentality? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. School. But yeah, yeah, pretty similar to Melbourne. Like, yeah. That's a full day. But there wouldn't be that there at Manly now. Mm. That no, was, no way. This is like- No clubs do that anymore. Nah. This yeah. is the end of the OGs. Yeah. Like that that was the end of it. Like we were the last, pro, like those old boys were the yeah. proper last old school style of training. Yeah, for sure. Um, but so, it was still hard in that four to five oh, hours that you, you did. And that's the thing with the old school guys is like there was, when you're ripping and tearing, you're ripping and tearing, there's no fucking half, one foot in, one foot out. You're out there absolutely going after it and then you get home. Um, but yeah, so, and not complaining at all, like privileged to be able to do it. 100%. But just to, so, some people think that it's not a full-time job. It's, it's a legit like full-time yeah. job and it's super hard all the time. Um, I actually over, when I was traveling Europe, so I went over to Europe, uh, beautiful trip. You know, I love love. I know you love love. Yeah. Is it, is it um, what's, what's your missus nickname? It's Mush. Noosh. 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 Bubba Ganoosh. I called her Mush. Mush. Mush will do. <laughs> Mush will do. Yeah, Mush will do. <laughs> Noosh. Noosh. So Bubba Ganoosh. So I know you love love. But anyway, I went over to Europe <laughs> and it was just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The whole time. I, only, I think I only got a bit crook once for about three days and then I was good. Um, anyway, we get basically to the last leg. I'm talking last like probably last week, maybe five days and get to London, get our hotel room, pack everything down, call up room service. Anyway, room service who walks in, as he walks in, I kick my toe on the side of the bed, but not a little baby kick, fucking kick of doom, like yeah. kick of death, <laughs> yeah. kick my toe. Anyway, so I'm, I didn't want to be a cat to the, the room service dude. So I, you know, then once like- Yeah, yeah, whip it in, whip it in, suck oh, it up. Fuck. Anyway, um, and so he gets out and that's when I can be like, oh, but you know, like my toe or whatever. And I was like, oh, this, and then, you know, when you hit something, you go, this is like, not good. Like yeah. this is, this is not a baby one where it's like, I'm soaking about it. This is, but I'm, I'm always of the mind. I want to not be a complainer. So I yeah. don't say anything yeah. anyway. Like, I, so I'm limping. I'm going, okay, usually this would be cleared up by two or three hours. You'd stop limping, limping, limping. Next day, I wake up. It's completely ballooned. We're in Europe. So I can't just sit in bed all day. <laughs> yeah. And so for the next four days, I limped around fucking London and Singapore with a, a broken toe, got back and yeah, she was broken. And yeah. she was rattled for, she didn't get good until five weeks, I'd say. Yeah. It took a good five weeks to get good. And since then you've been getting after it though. Exactly, exactly. And so the power that was building up in that time yeah. has been on fucking leash. It's been unleashed. <laughs> And, and no, you're right, bro. That's exactly what I was saying too before about even with Jimmy Mullaney, if I wasn't in the back, you never want to show. It's like the footy mentality too. You don't want to show weakness. Ever. Don't be a, don't be a coward, <laughs> soft, weak cat. Oh my toe, oh my neck. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like especially fuck. when it's a toe. Eh? Yeah, it's a toe, it's and a also like shut up, man. Like, are you dead? Nah. Your toe's sweet. If it's not sweet, 
I think that's a very footy thing though. Yeah, it is. Like you can like have a dislocated shoulder and the boys will be like, shut up, bro. Like just get through it. Well, you know what I've been, uh, we talked about it on the potty just with, with me and Mace talking about cheese. Yeah. He's clearly, I, I haven't like spoke to him at all, mm. even though, you know, we're, we're close enough with trees where you could reach out. He's clearly playing with, I, I believe fractured ribs and I've had that before mm. as well. I've, mm. If you've done your rib, you've done rib cartilage before oh. and you've like, it is torture, bro, for yeah. about five to six weeks mm. at least. And then it sort of never really gets right. And it's purely a pain injury season. too. Because it's not going to get worse, nah. but it just fucking hurts. Exactly. And you can play through it, but shit, it hurts. And you can see Cheese is still going through that now. Yeah. So. And he's still getting after it, yeah. which is And he mad. was unreal on the weekend. He was so good. He changed the game. Mm. Without him, they don't win, I reckon. Yep. Um, oh, speaking of broken ribs, it was so... It's one of those ones where the, the trainer and physio, they have to tread carefully because... They tell you, basically they can't say don't be soft, mm. but at the same time they're saying, look, it can't get any worse. It's just up to how much pain you can handle. Yeah. And as a bloke, you're like, so what you're saying is, is if I don't play, I'm a cat. And it's universal that everyone knows that in the locker room. Exactly. Because like, they won't go and say it, but they'll go like, oh, he's got, he's done his rib cartilage. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh yeah, you can play on that. Yeah, and so, so then, you're going. And, and they don't go, yeah, you should play. They just go, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Just let you know. And you're Just gone. <laughs> so I was at the Bronx and I, um, I've sp told this story before, but so I broke six ribs and my lung collapsed. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, I played for like 10 to 15 minutes after. It was so fucking painful. Stayed on the field. Um, and I got into the changing room and cause like I'm a winger that looks the way I do. Like I don't look tough. <laughs> anyway, so bro, I'm in the underneath Suncorp. First of all, when I when I walked off the back, they threw the water bomb on the ground. Like they didn't even like, oh, are you okay, Kempi? Because like I stayed on, and then it's like they scored a try on us, and yeah. I was like, I've got to come off these ribs. I don't know what's going on, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Anyway, so I walked off the back by myself, walked up. They threw the ball on the ground. I was like, what the hell? And so I went underneath, go into the doctor's room, and the I don't I think it was the doctor, and I'm like, oh my god, like I'm in so much pain, like rah rah, and he was like, look. Cracked ribs, like, it shouldn't be this, nothing's like that bad. Like, mm. you're fine, you're good to go. Basically, mm. like, he's like, just give him some Panadol, he'll be sweet. I was like, I couldn't breathe. I'm like, mm. I can't breathe. So yeah. he's basically calling me a cat. Yeah. And I'm going, Fuck, look, I'm not Shane Webke, but I'm not a cat. <laughs> I'm not a fucking cat. Yeah. Anyway, I was like, give me something, rah, rah. Then the hospital, can't, like, the ambulance comes. Get to the, um, get to the hospital then so they take me straight to hospital they get the scans and they come in they're like oh you've got um three broken ribs and i was like okay sweet all good anyway actually just a quick side note i was so fit such a dog that <laughs> it kept beeping on the heart monitor because my resting heart rate was too low <laughs> just just a side that's note a bad, that's uh, a nice side i'm note. a dog you got to throw that out there yeah had to throw that out there that's just fact that's too. good nick that's, that's good facts nick. yeah too. yeah anyway so um <laughs> so they kept rushing in being like oh you're all right and i'm like i'm just a dog <laughs> <laughs> anyway so they send me home they're like oh you know like um you'll be all good rah rah okay yep sweet go home get back with one of my ex misses a thousand ex misses ago go to sleep watch the tv wake back up the next morning i'm driving into training and either driving into training or we're driving somewhere together and she was like i was laughing and i was like oh stop i stopped like stop i'm i'm feeling a bit uh like wheezy from yeah, it yeah anyway so i went to they like got to broncos training they're like look here's the you know the uh referral go down and just we just want to get a ct scan to check whether just everything's okay i get in there ct scan they the doctor literally comes sprinting out. He's like, you need to get to a doctor right now. Mm. Your lungs collapsed. Fucking and I'm hell. going, what the hell? So I get straight to a doctor. They, they re-scan everything. That's uh, like, it's actually, we missed some of the ribs. It's not three, it's six broken ribs. Yeah. One's like fully snapped and your lungs collapsed. So that's like insert on this side, that to insert um, like a, like a, uh, a, not a pipe, a um, tube yeah. that like reinflates the lung. Yeah. And you gotta be in there for like two to three nights. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm an idiot. This was my fault. The first one was my fault. I came back. So I just like, when you're young and you're on the fringes, you just want to keep your spot. Yeah. So I came back three weeks later, uh, idiot, and got through 70 minutes of the game. I think I got needled up to play. I'm not sure. Maybe not. Got through 70 minutes of the game and the whole time this is playing Yui, they just kept saying, go for his ribs, go for his ribs. Because they knew there's no way that he could be recovered by then. Yeah. Anyway, got an inside ball off... Uh, 
Lockie. Yeah. Is it is it Stimps? Not Stimson. Remember the Steve Simpson? Yes, the big, big. Oh, he's big. a dog. He's Steve a dog. Simpson's a dog. Bro, he fucking jammed me in the ribs. Yeah. Boom, ribs yeah. gone again. He was he was as rough as this, mate. M- mate, Steve Simpson. so big and strong. Absolutely jammed me. Anyway, but then for the rest of the year, then I was like a bit. Then that it came, it was like this weird dance with the club where like the trainer would always be like, oh, you know, you can play like, oh, yeah. you know, like it, don't be a cat kind of thing. Didn't yeah. say that, yeah, but yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the vibe I was getting. And so I would go and play, I'd get needle up and then the needle would wear up, wear off in like the 60, 70th minute. And, I, and I'd go down in pain like, oh my God, like can't, yeah. I can't continue. And, ev- and eventually it started getting to this weird environment where they were thinking that I was just cutting it. You know, when you get that yeah. vibe, some players get that vibe with clubs where the clubs just think they're cutting it. Mm. And so I put my foot down. I said, I'm not fucking playing one more game until I get every scan, scan possible. Yeah. This was like right at the end of the year, finally get a scan, like a proper scan again, because I hadn't got a scan since the first one. Yeah. CT scan, there's still a crack in my ribs the whole year. And I was like, far out. And that was like such an example of, you want to be tough, yeah, and it's good that they push you to your edge. Yeah, but that was one where we got it wrong. Well, actually, then I went back to the club. <laughs> went back to the club a few years later. We are uh, so I strained my hamstring in round one, and and it was just like a little tweak. Yeah, and it was either round two or three, and I think he was pushing me because I was about to get put, called back into first grade. Yeah. Anyway, we did this um, like a fitness test. You know the fitness test. Did the fitness test before, like two days before or whatever. Well, like a beep. Oh, yes. Like, sorry, yeah, no. Uh, fitness test, yeah, To yep. see if I was good to go. You, you, the you was run good. a few laps, going yep. back 70, 80%, 90%. See how I was going. Yep. Anyway, like I was really umming and ahhing. I was like, oh man, I just don't know. I just don't know. And so I was with the assistant trainer at that stage and he was much more personable and much understood me a bit better. He's, yep. he's, he's actually quite high now. The, the, the head trainer, he pulled me aside and basically like dressed me down and basically yeah. said I had a bad attitude. Yeah. Anyway, so I was like, oh, okay, sweet. I'll play, I'll play. Yeah. Bro, roll in warm up. Boom, hammy gone out for six to eight weeks. Full hammy gone. Like, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? <clears throat> Whereas if I looked hard and tough or whatever, yeah. they would never question what I would, you know what I mean? They wouldn't question yeah, it. Yeah, no, like, oh, yeah, I know what you're saying. Look, it's at, at the end of the day, this, everyone sort of, they put players like that through all the time. I, I had a crack sternum um, in, in under 20, same thing. I was <sighs> like, man, I'm, Fucking, you know, you go get, and they, they sort of try to, uh, same thing without telling you, uh, you shouldn't be playing. Like it's up to you, basically. Yeah. You go and play, and the last like fifteen minutes, someone runs straight at it, oh. big bear hug, cracked it. This another four weeks or whatever. Oh mate, and if, so it's hard. It's hard to balance because I understand. I'm not like um, saying it's wrong that they do that. And because you want to play as well. You want to play. And also, like, to play NRL, you need to be pushed to your limits. Yes. To your complete edges. Otherwise, everyone would do it. Like, not everyone, but there's – it weeds out people who aren't capable of 100%. Of doing 100%. Well. But then you get sometimes where you get pushed too far yeah. and you fucking – that's one thing in my career I think I, I should have been more firm on, like, you know what, take the time off you need to recover, get yep. back. If you don't stay in this first grade side, that's fine. Yep. Um, and I think that's what, like, guys like Wayne are really good. Like, they'll reassure you – even if you're not going to come back into first grade, they'll reassure you, like, look, go back to reserve grade. If you play well, you'll get your crack again. Whereas yeah. some other coaches don't communicate that well with no, you. No, especially back in those days. Oh, man. I'd, I'd imagine it'd be better now because Surely. there's so much scrutiny around the game. Yeah. And it's in particular with the HIA, because remember, like, even the thought process around HIAs, bro, like, if you got, if you got like, knocked out, it's just you expected to play. You're you a cat knocked, if you You'd didn't. get knocked out at training, bang, go see the physio for a little bit. If you, if you, you know, come back, you've got your consciousness back straight back out there yep. training so they're very careful with it now and it's why you've got to have a strong squad to to win a competition because teams you know you can't win a competition with without a strong 25 to 28 you honestly um, can't uh, squad members these days I, yep. I believe well i mean look how strong the like the panther squad has been they've been really fortunate with injury but like their squad is crazy strong yep. like got so much depth in the outside backs uh o'sullivan could come in and pick up those games that they you know may have dropped in other seasons, and he's gone to the Dolphins now. He's three for three. Yeah, um, you got Hopgood, who wasn't like he's one of Parra's best to start lit- the year. Easy, he just couldn't even get a run. At couldn't all. even get a run. Mm. Um, I would love to know because I feel like with the Panthers, their injury they barely get injured. Yeah, they've got a good system out there. Whereas like some other clubs <clears throat> get decimated, and so I just wonder like, you know, I know a lot of it is luck. I'm not. I'm not trying to say it's not, but clearly the Panthers are doing something right. Yeah. I, I, there, have you been out to their facilities no. out there? It's next level. Really? Like the fields, <clears throat> the um, the gym setup that they've got there. I believe that plays a little part. Also, they always 
I believe teams that play with high intensity and mm. playing games where they're going all out, I th I think the best possible way to to prevent injury is going as hard as possible as much as you can. Mm. Teams that like you look at teams that get injured, like you know, just say um, you. I I believe you sometimes you find a lot of injuries happen to teams that are maybe getting blown out by 20 mm. and they sort of just start putting the handbrake up, start trying to get through the game. Um, you know, teams down the bottom, you know, potentially like if you look at the teams down the bottom who haven't had the best facilities, the West Tigers got their new centre of excellence. Mm. Hopefully that helps out. But mm. yeah, I've always found that teams down the bottom are just not playing in those um, high intensity games. Mm. Cause like Talon May, I think he's the first, could you check this? It's the first ACL in five years at the club. Bro, you can't fucking you take one step at any other club you have getting an ACL. Yeah, for sure. It must be it has something to do it's with facilities be. in the field, then for sure. It's got to be something to do with their their program. Yeah, sure. Like I just, it's been nearly four years now, mm. and like the longest they've had, like even even like uh, Cleary, he played, he needed a Rico, got through the year, and then you know what I mean? Yeah. Like oh, Bizar, I, I think Bizar did his ankle, but missed like um, five or six weeks at yeah. one point after origin but still come back for the finals yeah. and won the gf so good whatever they're doing out there it's absolutely amazing yeah. Um, yeah it was first regular first grader in the last five years that's that's absolutely that's wild that's some squads have got three yeah absolutely wild um but speaking of uh footy we've got uh actually mm. kempy's byo so rugby league extra markets if you go to sports bet kempy's byo uh curse breaking um, bet. So you got 2023. This season, obviously, Brisbane Broncos win the next five games, rounds four to eight included, paying four bucks. You What's can the? Uh, can you run us through the schedule? What's the? Do you feel the pressure on a market like this, per personally? Well, I actually four bucks is quite tight. If I'm yeah. being honest, yeah. I'm being honest with the, and look, I yeah. could like obviously we're partners with Sportsbet yeah. now. They're, and they're you part of the look after the punters though. I want to look after the punters. Yeah. And, and sport bet, they're part of the family now, yeah, and I'm part yeah. of their family. Yeah. But four bucks is pretty tight for a, like that five means- Five in a row. Five in a row, but that means that they go eight in a row. They must have a, they must have a pretty soft draw. It's not too, like- Yeah, look, I, got, I got a fire. Yeah, Maddie, what do you got? Dolphins. Yep. Tigers. Yep. Raiders. Yep. Titans. Yep. Eels. So Raiders and Eels are tough. Ooh, yeah, Raiders are Dirks. They're dogs. Yeah. They'll sneak no, one on No you. matter how the game, it'll be ugly somehow. Mm. Whether Raiders win or Raiders lose. Um, I think they'll get the job done against the Dolphins with Felice out in, yeah. in particular. Uh, Titans. They They're going to be, be tricky, man. The Titans, Titans always step up for the yeah, Broncos. Yeah, Titans are tricky. Yeah, you're right. So, when but they I mean, winning look, by heaps like last year, the Titans, and they got run down. Was that the year before? That, I think that was last year. Was that they last year? They got run down. Yeah, but they'll win them quite comfortably against the Bronx, won't they? Yeah. So, yeah. look, but four bucks is not bad. Yeah. Chuck a sneaky 10 on it. Yeah, Chuck do you feel the pressure though on the because like I, you broke the curse with the Liver yeah, King? I've yeah. seen you seen that. Yeah, great content by the way. <laughs> it's um, all about the content. Yeah, riffing into it. But uh, now, do you feel the pressure of this of this market? Does it? Wow. So you're the second person to mention that. <laughs> so Tom's mentioned that, and yeah. I was like, don't bring that fucking energy around here, bro. <laughs> oh, all right, bro. Take that, <laughs> take that back to your fucking studio, bro. Yeah, take the curse <laughs> talk. Now you fucking brought it up. Yeah, because I'm a, I'm. See, I'm, I'm an OG punter. You're like, an OG punter. Yeah, so I'm a degenerate. Okay. I'm a degenerate. So, so any suspicious activity you're yeah. going to jump on and be like, yeah, oh, like, that's the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, oh, yeah. no. Yeah, it makes me feel like <laughs> Mate. I push away from that. Oh, personally. no. That If I recurse the club. <laughs> no, but look, listen. If they beat the curse and recurse. You can, no, but let's, let's wait a sec. <laughs> if they beat the Dolphins. Yep. This bet was placed this week. So okay. get head to sports bet, guys. Make sure to gamble responsibly. Don't go crazy. Just what you can afford. Put her on your Kempi's BYO. She's paying four bucks. Chuck a ten or twenty, maybe even fifty if you're feeling uh, feeling a bit toey. But if they beat the Dolphins and then they go on to lose against whoever, that's technically not a curse because the bet was placed this week and they got to win. Because what, what I'm scared of <laughs> is people if yeah. they lose, like let's say they win the next two and then they lose three, yeah. they're going to blame this. But that's that doesn't how curses work. Yeah. Yeah. You got to yeah, you got to think of the uh, the average degenerate. They're they're always trying to find a reason to blame someone. <laughs> but I've been like, if someone, like I've, if I've been down, you know, having a little sneaky pun on something, and then I even hear a little like, sniffle at the at the worst possible time, I was like, fuck, what's he doing in here? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! So we'll find a way. Nah, I'm sure there'll be some blowback. They're actually they're a. They'd be favourites in all those games, put it that way, right? Yeah, they should be, unless Eels go on a crazy run, but yep. they should. So four bucks, not bad, mm. not bad. 
Uh, so jump on that or jump on whatever you want. Uh, proudly partnered with the great sports bet. They've been fantastic. They got uh, due to sports bet. Got to interview Alec Volkanovski last week. Oh yeah, I've went, seen that. That's went, gross. Went down to Melbourne, uh, Melbourne headquarters for sports bet, which is sick. Their studio is sick setup. Great bunch of people, um, and it's just cool to see the setup behind such a big company in this country. Mm. And they like you forget like these are all people that just punters like you and me, just trying to do their best. That's just it. Just trying to do their best. Um, he seems like a good fella. Volks, yeah. legend, bro. He legend. just seems so down to earth, bro. mate. For a, well, I don't. I feel like people. I mean, most people would, but I feel like a lot of people don't appreciate the fact if you are pound for pound the best MMA fighter <clears throat> in the world, you are essentially the most dangerous human being on planet Earth. I don't. Yeah, there's not enough love for him in this country right now, is there? Eh? He should be and, a fucking superstar. And t- until they get into the fights, there's obviously support behind him, mm. and then I'd imagine that there's a really strong. UFC yeah. core that love him. Don't get me wrong, mm. but the average like maybe footy fan, AFL fan, I don't think they've proper adopted him like they should be because he's been un- unbelievable, man. Like pound for pound, number one in the yeah. world. Like if we had the pound for pound best boxer in the world, yeah, he would be. Like look at big Tim Sue is yep. here. Yep. Yep. Um, and look, they promoted it right. The great No Limit. Shout out No Limit. Give her a follow. No Limit, the best in the business. No love Limit the boxing. Boys. Love, love big Georgie boys. Rose, ex teammate of mine, mate. Big Georgie. Big gorgeous. And George. I even played with Trent. Uh, at Wenny, Wenny Magpies in those uh, Jimmy Maloney. Oh, really? Like, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, so they've done his, like, they've handled his career so well. Like, everyone tries to bag, like, footy boxes, but without footy boxes, Tim Zoo, and I'm not disrespecting the Zoo name, the Zoo name is big. Yeah. But without the footy players on those cards, I don't think he would have as big of an audience as he does now. Mm. And I'm not trying yep. to be disrespectful yeah, to yeah, Tim, yeah. Tim at That's, all. Uh, Look, and that's always that's been said with with regards, and everyone knows that when the the footy good boys get put on cards. But um, I think you know, Gal's been a great representation of how Huge. you do it the right way. Yep. He's always looked after him, even if um, things haven't played out the way they expected on No Limit with some of the the, the rugby league matches. Yep. Gal's been up front with it, gave his purse to a couple of the boxers, so they do it the right way. I think so, and like I, I'd understand if there was a world where. Australian boxing, there was a, a finite amount of money and it could only go to a certain amount of people. Mm. Then I wouldn't want young boxers to have money taken away from them. But there's so many guys that look at Harry Garside. Yep. You know, he got on a, some footy player cards. Yep. Now he's a bigger name. Yep. Um, you know, I, I reckon Jai Opatire, if he came, like, and, and he's a world champion, yes. so he's kind of gone past that himself. But, uh, you know, put him on a few footy cards. Yep. headlining and it just brings more eyeballs to, to them like yep. Tim Zhu now he's proven he is world class beyond a shadow of a doubt he was absolutely amazing uh, a couple of weeks ago but yeah the, the footy card gives it more exposure which gives more money to boxing because yep. when you think about it like okay let's say let's say footy players didn't box at all how many people would be following Australian boxing right now you'd have to go the Cambosis route which is the toughest route never yeah 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 he did it um he did the yeah, hard, he, hard way. Mate, yeah, and even Dry to a degree, right? With yeah. I've known Dry yep. a few years. He's um, Benny, Benny Roberts' cousin. We yep. did some stuff early on when he was a kid, and uh, I've always appreciated him from afar as well, um, the journeys that they go on. But, yeah, it's if, if you can just take it for what it is, you know, if you're a, a boxing purist, you probably, you know, you don't like seeing footy players fight and, and sh- you know, especially when they, they're a little bit higher on the card than mm. what some of these... Um, but I, like because of the No Limit guys, like you're saying, it's like I st- I've started to enjoy the others, like, you know, little Sammy Goodman. Yeah. I enjoy his fights. Yep. Um, yeah, it's it's cool to see the rise of Nikita, obviously, with, yep. with Tim as well. So um, I'm st- I wouldn't have known who these guys were if it wasn't for um, even the Maloney boys who have done yeah. some stuff as well. Yep. Like, you know, they created their own thing as well, but... Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't know much about boxing until I started following the No Limit stuff myself yep. personally. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's a great way for them mm. to get exposure. And I'm definitely not saying like the footy players are the reason Tim Zoo is where he's at. Like not at all. He's I'm clear, just saying clearly talented. Yeah. He's clearly yeah. world class gun fighter. He's there, regardless of what his last name is. He's worked it to get there. What I'm saying is, all it does it just brings more eyeballs to the sport. Yep, for sure. If I'm a boxer. I would want to be on a card with footy players. Yep, and a majority of like I've you know had interactions with Timmy before and and, and a lot of the boys. Majority of them are, are pretty cool with it as yeah. well. Yeah, they understand. They understand it's for what it's worth. Yeah, they understand and the, the, business. And the eyeballs there. Yeah, the business side of it. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I would love, absolutely love. And look, I think Tim Zoo's easily big enough now where he could just. I mean, he did actually. He just hosted a card, headlined a card without any footy fights on it. Yep. He's been big enough for a while, I think. Um, and that's what you want. Like, I think that's great that footy can go, all right, here's a little bit of eyeballs to you. Now go and do your own thing, bro, and, and kill it. Um, yeah, so I'm not saying these players, these sorry, these fighters wouldn't have built up 
like wouldn't have gone on and done great things without rugby league. I'm just saying, I think it helps. Yeah, I, well, I think it's a problem in Australian sports across the board. Mm. Like if you look at the States, if you live in Chicago, right? I've, we've had this maybe um, chat before, Kempi. Mm. If you live, live in Chicago, you go for the Bulls, you go for the Chicago Bears, yep. you go for the White Sox, you go for, you know, whatever the, the hockey team is as well. And you support your local boxer who comes out of that area. Mm. It's like in Australia, it's like, well, the rugby, your rugby league, your rugby league, or your boxing, yeah. your boxing purist, or that's a good point. You know, like we, like rugby league fans can't be fans of AFL and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. But like we mix and mingle with the different athletes. <laughs> mm. um, when you know, when you play, or you yeah. know, you get them on a podcast. Now, the best dudes, and we all appreciate each other yep. as sportsmen. It's just sometimes the fan bases don't jump on board with it, which that's is so true. That's so true. Especially AFL and NRL. There's yes. no crossover there. And rugby union. Rugby yeah, union. union's tough. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it is incredible what the, the Rose Boys have done. I think they've done it smart. If you've got an audience there, why not appeal to that audience yep. and bring more people in? And people want to see rugby league players get knocked out. It's as simple as that. Mate, hundred percent. Like Horsburgh and Royce Hunt up next. Oh, what about the great Horsburgh, <laughs> Horsburgh, uh, Roy, uh, Royce Hunt, Royce Hunt, mate? We got a dog. That's the best. It's literally the best. That was so good. Like I feel bad for Salmon, but I think like the more people say it, yeah, the more further away it gets from him. And it becomes like just a funny thing Ricky Stewart yes, said. You know yes. what I mean? I think it's that already. To you reckon? Be fair. Okay. I, I almost like um, it wouldn't have been ideal for Salmon, but when it first came out, I was more like I'd never associated it with him. Salmon. Yeah, okay. I more just, Stewart's it was, it was funny a Ricky thing. thing yeah, for me. yeah, okay, okay. And I, it was so fucking out of line that it was hilarious. <laughs> I just always seen it as funny. I never yep. seen it as like, yeah, there's like the sto the story behind the whole thing is not fucking funny. Yeah. But like, I was like. Fuck, that's ruthless. He just said that. Yeah. And then that's hilarious that a head coach just did that on a presser. But like the reasoning behind it's not. Um, and then the effect that it had on uh, Salmon, I think he's, um, like, I haven't had much to do with him, but I, he seems like a pretty uh, knockabout sort of dude. So yep. hopefully he took it well. And, um, you know, we just have a bit of fun with it in content. Oh, mate. What about the, like, the actual word weak gutted dog? Like, I've never heard it. <laughs> Do you, do you reckon that we had to? That's got to be pre-planned. Do you reckon that's in his vocab, like on the reg? It surely do you is. He, do you reckon he's just like yeah. driving down, gets someone pulls in front of him, you fucking weak got a dog. <laughs> like, do you reckon he says that all the time, or did he specifically <laughs> oh, have that no. ready to go for Sam? I reckon he says it all the time. I reckon yeah, so surely. I. Yeah, I reckon that's in his vocab. It would be if I did something wrong to Ricky and he called me a weak got a dog, it'd be an honour. Mm. It would be a fucking. I'd love honor. to be called a weak got a dog. Are you serious? It would be the fucking best. Ricky, Ricky Stewart was my. Um, Coach, so I was in under twenties at Roosters, yep. and um, we rocked up to preseason training. We got to do two days uh, a week for preseason at the Roosters, and I rocked up with a mad ratty. I was a Western Sydney boy, and I rocked up with a rat's tail. After we finished the session, we did uh, uh, a bike around Centennial Park, and then he caught me just as I was leaving. And he goes, "If you rock up with that rat's tail on Thursday, yep, just don't worry about coming." <laughs> so I fucking went home and cut the rat's tail off. But he, if he'd said you cut that fucking rat tail off, <laughs> we you weak gutted dog. <laughs> I would have I I like wore that with honour. Yep. I probably would have rocked up with the rat and seen what he'd done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how good's that? Wayne Bennett made um, Darius Boyd cut it at training. At training, At yeah. training. He yep. was like, mate, you fucking cut it. He, he, Wayne Bennett told me, so I dyed my hair black. I don't know why, like. What the fuck? Dyed it black. <laughs> dyed it black. Yeah. It's like my hair's already dark yeah, brown. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck's wrong with you? Anyway, I dyed it black. I rocked up to training. And at the end of training, Wayne pulled me aside and he's like, same thing to you. If you rock up with your hair like that, fucking tomorrow, go on to kiss. I was like, shit, how do I get rid of this? I had to cut it real short. Um, I think Sam thought I had to cut a pink ratty that he had. He had like a pink side little ratty there. He had to Even cut that. Sammy. Even fuck Sammy Tato, the OG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Wayne's real, like yeah. I think he's, he's lightened up a little bit. You'd have to, you've got to adapt. Right? Um, but you, when you look at it, like most of his players in his side are short back and sides. Mm. Short back, like I'm trying to think about anyone that has a mullet at the club now. I don't think they do. I don't think they do. They're playing. And they're fashionable too. Yeah. Ruben Cotter, Grouse. Yep. So, but like starting 13, it's very fucking short back mm. and sides. Mm. Very missionary. Do you think? Do you think that comes into his uh, recruitment process too? Like, he's, you know, Ruben Cotter becomes available. He's a dog. He is but a dog. He's got a mullet. He's not for me. <laughs> shave your hair. Put it in the contract. Ryan, pa shave Ryan Pappenhausen down in Melbourne Storm. He oh. becomes available, but I know he's a great number one. But I can't have him. Can't mullet have him. Man. He, but well, has he cut his now recently? Perhaps. Or has he still got it? He I think he's still have it. Surely, because yeah. he's put so much work into that yeah. beautiful man. Big Tino. 
Oh, good. Actually, Wayne did say something about Big Tino. I, yep. But I think it was because it was like a one-off, as in, you know, in the Origin camp. Yep. He kind of just let it slide. Yeah. But he did. I, I it would think, have annoyed him though. Yeah, he did say it. said he like did. he didn't like it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Have you watched that documentary on Stan? No, not yet. No, it's, it's really good. The, the Redcliffe one, the yeah, Dolphins one? It's really good. It so, actually is, is such Is it done good, now too? So uh, an, uh, an episode every week. I actually haven't seen the third one. I've seen the first two. They're okay. about an hour long. Yeah. It's so good to see, you know, we already kind of knew this as players, but to just genuinely see, see how they recruit, what's the process behind everything. Yep. I mean, I think it would help like a lot of young players to, if, to watch it. Because I wish I knew this kind of stuff when I was young because then I, would I wouldn't take things as personally all the time. Yep. And I'd probably be more patient and also understand what they're looking for. Whereas yep. like when I was young, I didn't know anything. Like, so proper insight around the boardroom and everything. Mate, like, they, like they literally- Sitting down discussing players. Yeah, yeah, they, they, oh, literally, they literally sit there on the whiteboard and they, they show you every single player they were going to go after. Yep. They speak about trying to get Junior Polo there. Oh, yeah. They speak about um, Kale and Ponga, whether they think he's a six or not. They, like you can fully see the board and who they're going after. Awesome. And it's really interesting. Like yep. really interesting. And there's some there's some people on the board, like Taruva had a meeting with them. Yep. And they thought they were going to get Taruva and yep. then he, he re-signed with the- so like it's super interesting bro it's such it's really well done oh and the quality of the shots like it's 4k it looks yeah. mad i've seen some of the micro for it looks sick Mate, like visually yeah so good um to uh balance to yeah. you know they talk about him the character Mate, he's funny as but also just his journey like he's still a groundsman at Re i'm not sure about now because he's right full time but last year in the docker he's a groundsman at the thingo yeah. that does all the fucking painting on the ground and that yeah because he's playing queensland cup yeah. as well yeah i know some boys have done that over the years yeah Got some uh, gigs around the footy club. I was uh, pouring beers at a like uh, at a bar near. No, no, I was pouring beers at the Broncos Leeds Club for a bit and yeah. working in the pokey room. Why playing? Yeah, like in the full time squad. Yep. Oh yeah. Because I was on so unders. They told me there's no room in the salary cap. Yeah. And um, and like I, you know, I was supposed to get an upgrade, and I was so I was waiting on this upgrade that yeah. never came. Yeah. And so I had all these bills to pay, and the upgrade never came, as yeah. it always does. Yeah. Um, and so I needed cash yeah. for, the, for the mortgage. So I was there yeah, just fucking pouring beers and working in the uh, poker. Look at you now, bro. Full oh, circle. 100%. Full, full circle, circle, baby. <laughs> Your crew is so important in, when you're working. Like I've been in crews where like you can talk shit, the boys, same music's pumping, like everything. Then some crews where you're with like the older guys and that, oh. and you're like, it's the pits. Yeah. You're rocking into work going, this sucks, man. Yeah. You've got a mad crew that it's almost like your mates hanging out. Yeah. It's mad, like yeah, actually mad. That's the thing you miss with footy, right, too. Like, when yeah, you finish yeah. playing footy, yeah, the game's mad and all that. It's the locker room. It's yeah. been around the boys all the time. And I know. And just the watching the uh, – have you seen All The Way doco with Penrith? No, I haven't seen that one So either. it's on nine now. It's, I need to catch up on my docos. Yeah, you got to get in your docos, yeah. bro. I watch it – I watch it because, I, yeah, I want to, but also it's like I need to to be a, yep. around everything in the game. Yep. Um, and you get really good insights in those docos, like little bits that you don't see in normal media because it's like obviously a better insight. But um, they're quite the, private too, Penrith. Eh? Yeah, yeah. It you was don't really such get a good too much from them. No, you, you, they're, they're, I love what they're doing mm. out there. I'm such a fan of what they're doing. Mm. Oh man, I forgot what I was going to say now. Penny Panthers out the doco. Oh, anyway, um, it's a great doco. Got to yep. watch it all the way. It's 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 basically the second year where they're going for the repeat. Yep. Actually, this is a bit that I, I spoke about on the DMP potty, but w really interesting, and I want to get your thoughts on it. Uh, Ivan Cleary, when he's giving his grand final jersey to Appy, the last jersey. Breaks down in tears, bro. Ivan does. Cries. Yeah. Uh, That's like unheard of for a coach. Yeah. I've never seen a coach cry. Yeah, no, I, I have. I've seen a coach cry, but I understand from all the from the ex teammates that I've had mm. that have dealt with Appy, um, he's he's that guy. Yeah. Like he's a he's a leader of men. Um I feel sorry for him now, the Tigers it's it's been a bit rough the first three weeks, but yep. I haven't heard a guy that's either played with Appy or had something minor, mm. even interaction was with him as a, as a, a, a competitor. Yeah, yeah. Um, no one ever says a bad word about him. And um, I actually played golf with Benji the other, the other week and he was talking about the leadership that he showed straight away. Oh, he's, really? a, he's a no brainer. Yeah, well, yeah. Rolling straight into, um, into captaincy for him. So I hope it turns around for him. He, he's, he's, he's busting his gut out there for oh, the Tigers mate. and they just got to figure him out a little bit. Just got to work but, with him. Back to your point. Um, it's pretty impressive from a coach to is, be in tears. To show, is, like, yeah. I think that shows you why the Panthers are so successful. Yeah. Like the coach cares that much that he's in front of all the boys and he breaks down in tears because he cares. Like he's, he's sad that he's leaving. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's cool. I, th I think it just shows you how much Ivan cares about his players. Because yeah. I've never seen a coach um, get teary before. 
ever. They do a great job at all that, um, like jersey presentations and stuff like that. I've watched their mm. their um, content, and uh, it's like I think they were from from memory they were one of the first clubs to show all that sort of stuff. Hundred games, um, Viliami kick, kick out plays a hundred games. They mm. flew his family over, yep. or his family come over and stuff like that. I've even seen like um, I remember last year. Um, you know, Sonny Luke and Kurt Falls made their debut. Yep. And, um, you know, the partner comes in and hands all that stuff out. And there's like, everyone's crying in there. And what do you, you watch it and you're just like, fuck, this is heavy. Do you reckon Sir Scopius, how he would he handle, well, I'll call him Moosh from now on. Yeah. How do you reckon he'd handle Moosh coming in, saying yeah. something nice about him before a jersey Ooh, preso? Yeah, that would get me. That'd Especially get you. Especially now because I'm a dad. And she brought in she the brings baby in Lenny. One. She brings in Lenny, it's game over. Game over? Yeah. As soon as I've seen Lenny, and then you see it in as well. Like, yeah. as soon as you see your barb. That's it. Dunskies? Yeah. Grown man cry kind of stuff. Big time. Easy. Oh, wow. And proudly. Is Lenny short for Lennon? Something? Lennon? Lennon, yeah. How'd you come up with that name? Um, she, she, Kaya had a list of about 150. So yep. that's a real name, Kaya. So wow. Moosh, the Moosh. Um, <laughs> Moosh. She, had a, she had about 150 names. Yep. I brought it down to 10. Yep. And then... Um, Did you cut them like a footy squad? Be like, Look, Pretty you, much. You're like good? I, so she... she Read me the 150 all in one go. It took about 150 all in one go. Yeah, but I was like, it's the some that she loved too, by the way. She's going to hate me talking about this. But I was like, Alaska and Aspen and shit. And I went, nah, nah. And she goes, I don't want Alaska. Alaska. And I was like, all right, like, I would have liked a little bit of meaning in, in the names, yep. Yep. but I got my meaning in the middle name. So that's where I, that's where we found our middle ah, name. Okay, okay. You're a compromising dog. Yeah, I'm a guy compromising. You're a dog, but you're compromising. Yeah, I'm a dog <laughs> and, and, and I want some meaning, but I found it in the middle name, which is, which is sweet for me. And, uh, and we went through the names and she, we got it down to about 10 or 15, but I was like, no, no, no. And she's like, I like this one. I said, all right, leave it in, maybe. Yep. And then we just like, we, that's how we uh, filtered it out. And then um, <coughs> Lennon always just stuck with me for, for some reason. And then yep. she, she won me over with Lenny too. Lenny, yeah. I really like, I love Lenny. I yeah. call her Lenny all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she, straight away she's like, well, like I like Lennon, but like a, we'll probably call her Lenny. And mm. I was like, oh yeah, that's like, out of, the, out of the list that we come down to 10, I really like that. Um, and then I was sort of trying to find, for, so for me, I, I like more traditional names. Mm. So I was like the Elizabeths and all that sort of really? stuff. Really? See, like, I'm, I like different names. Yeah. So yeah. she's that. That's what she was like. Okay. Obviously, Alaska and Aspen and yep. stuff. Yep. Yep. So I went. I was going the more traditional route, um, and then yeah. So we we got we got Lennon, and then um, I wanted like a, a Maldi name because mm. I got Maldi heritage. Yep. And then we I were looking through some some Maldi words just going through, and I got Kaya. So Kaya is my partner's name's Kaya. Yep. But the spelling's different. Yeah. And it means the ocean. Oh wow! And we're like you know we're That's right mad. near the water and the yep. ocean and all that sort of stuff and yep. uh, yeah I just love that so I got Kaya and yep. even though she was stoked too because it's her, yep. name, her name but it's yep. spelled different yeah um, so yeah that's a so we got Lennon Kaya man what was it like first kid what's oh. going on in your head there oh so it just changes your perspective on yeah. everything yeah. like life changes like you sort of get you smaller. Anymore like really small yeah um you got like i've got you know i'm friendly to a lot of people yeah and and yeah you got you, that's the way you like i want to be but yeah. who, who i want to hang out with is just like purely my family yeah um and then obviously my brothers and that and their mm. family we hang out with them a lot um and like majority of the time it's just her, like her like so if i'm not doing anything i'm racing back to sarah sarah all the time yeah i never understood it as a player too it's it's something you can't explain until you go through it yeah i remember when i used to play and um, like guys that were two or three years younger than me, like you know Daly and, and Kieran Foran and Jimmy Bura, and they yeah. had kids really early. Yeah. And I'd just be like, would get a coffee, and they go, oh, "I just got to shoot home to the fam." I was like, "You want to hang out with the boys?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I used, yeah. to, I used to find it weird. I was like, yeah. "Come on, man, you get a coffee with the boys." Oh, and isn't Fozzie was like, Kieran was not uh, not. It's not bad or good. He was. He loved. He just loved getting home to his kids. He loved yeah. seeing his kids. So. Yeah. Um, it's appreciation and understanding that I found yeah. only just recently. I'm like, oh, that's what they always want. Because I can imagine like, you know, you get home and they're smiling to see you. They've got this yeah. unconditional love for you that no yeah. one else in the world has. Yeah. And like, it's just this, it's, it's this constant, like you're dealing with this little human that you are their world. <laughs> Like you're everything to them. We're just going through. She just started laughing. She's full on proper laughing now. That's yeah. the milestone. No way. Like, yeah. So that shit's cool. So I know how to make a laugh now. Yeah. So all wow. week. So it's just like like the blow on the stomach. Yeah, and, yeah. And like peekaboo and all that. Has sort she of already stuff. got you under her thumb? Oh yeah. Daddy's yeah. girl. Done. Dunskis. Done. And Damn. like it's it's so obviously Kai does all the heavy lifting. I'm still doing content and getting out and working. Yeah. And uh, and you know I'm, I'm out and about. 
but she's full on like a daddy's girl. So as soon as I get home, she might be restless for a little bit with Kyra and, um, yeah, she's struggling to get her to bed and then I'll roll in. Oh. She'll just go like, lie straight in my, um, in my arms and, and, boom, then, and then me and her just like go oh, to bed man, straight that's away. The and then Kaya's like, even though Kaya's happy that she's like asleep, yeah. she'll be like frustrated that it happened so easy yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man. So yeah, it's cool. It's mate, mate. How good, how good. Um, now. Okay, uh, so we got, and this is obviously brought to you by Sportsbet, guys. If you're going to have a pun, you do it with number one, the Sportsbet. You go to the app. The app's got absolutely everything you need. They've also got share a bet, so if you want to punt with your mate, you just press one button, boom, it'll copy their bet. Make sure to gamble responsibly, guys. As I always say, only punt what you can afford. Just a little bit of fun. Don't go crazy. You win some, but you lose more. Uh, but let's get into it. Melbourne Storm versus Tigers. Storm paying dollar thirty one. Tigers paying three fifty. What do you reckon there? Let's go. De- both teams desperate, eh? Can be desperate. Like, I've gone against the Storm the last couple of weeks and, and got them and come up trumps. I had the Titans last week, no and way. I had the Dogs the week before. Um, I feel like they'll get the job done against the Surely. Tigers. Surely, so got the money man's back. Uh, I, st- I still really think just because of all the the losses they had in the off season, really missing Nas, big Nas oh, through massive, the middle, massive. Um, and the Tigers will be desperate. It'll be tricky for the Storm. I think this is going to be closer than what a lot of people think. But take the Storm, mate. If Tigers win, heads will roll at the Storm. <sighs> like it'll be one of the worst runs I've ever had. It'll be in regards to like who they've lost to. It'll, 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 look, we've always seen Bellamy the winner. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've seen him fire up and he's been losing at half time and going crazy and yeah. he's blown up after you know in press conferences after a after a loss. But generally they're against good teams. Yeah. Lost against if they lose the Bulldogs, Titans and Tigers respectfully to those teams, yeah. you're right. Fuck that. Fuck being in that uh, locker room after. Mate. Oh, I, see I reckon like that could have like pretty big ramifications in I think with the storm, they're so ruthless. That they would be willing to go, yous aren't what the storm are about. We are cleaning everything. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, mm. not everyone, but I reckon you could. Let's say they go on a losing streak and they, they go for the first 12 games and they win four and the rest of it, they lose it. Yeah. I genuinely think they'd go, yous aren't what the storm are about. That's not their standards. Yeah. And so they'd go, we'll, we'll fucking, we'll bring new people. Because he said, they lost, I think, their second game last year. Mm. And it was against a gun team as well. And Bellamy literally said, if these blokes don't start, don't start turning up, I'll find blokes who will. Yep. Like, Holy heck. It. Was that against Para last year? Um, yeah, I think so. By Para and he literally was be. like, yeah. I will find new people that will play yep. properly for the storm. I think they're really lacking in the forward pack, the leadership Nasty. that like, it just shows what the Dolphins are doing, right? No, 100%. All those leaders are up there and, and, and they're struggling through the middle. Was, I love all the boys in, um, and they've got so much talent in the backs, but... They're just missing, missing a bit of leadership in the middle. And, and well, you know, Welsh is in there and, and Harry Grant and, and whatnot, but um, Welsh is just coming off, of, you know, missing a Massive complete injury. season with, yeah. the, with the Achilles, I believe it was. Yeah, Achilles, yeah. Um, for him and, and Harry's still getting used to, you know, everyone always questioned Cheese about mm. playing for, uh, 80 minutes and that, uh, the, the Roosters as well. But we had to see Harry play consistent 80 minute footy as well. I don't like so, him playing so 80 that's, minutes. That's still a thing that he's got to. Yeah. Get his, get his. Um, I think he's capable of it. I think he can pull it off. Is it the best version of Harry? Maybe not. Mm. He's um, too explosive. Like, I want him yeah. out there just ripping in for maybe sixty minutes, sixty-five minutes. Yeah, just going hard. Like, the, you know, Cam Smith's a one in a million. You're never going to find another kid. Like no. we all, I think everyone gets measured to the, you know, the Cam Smith mold. Like, yeah. oh, if you if you want to be an elite hooker, you've got to be eighty minutes. But there's very, very, very few hookers that can keep the standard that he keeps for 80 minutes every single week, week in, week out. Yeah, and even at the back end when all these new rules were coming in, he still at that point had cheese, right? Yeah. So he had like he had a break if need be. Yeah. He didn't really, he rarely took it. Yeah. <laughs> but he, you know, it was there if he needed he it. He could just be like, cheese, jump in for a sec. Yeah. I'll just jog for this set. Yeah. And then he could jump in, jump. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm going Storm, but yeah, so Tiger's paying 350. So if there's any risky people that like to dabble in the dark arts, mm. bit of risky pun on a 350, not bad 350. Uh, now we've got Dolphins paying 350, Broncos dollar 31. Even though I think Broncos win, I don't mind the 350 for the Dolphins ambush. Yeah, yeah, I would have liked it more if Felice was playing. Mm, mm. Um, but the Broncos are looking good, Campy. They're looking hot. Fuck, they're looking hot. But. First 70 minutes, Dragons were right in it last week. Yeah, they were. And then I, I reckon that's more of a credit to the Dragons mm. than less than – like, I don't I don't see that as a um, a negative towards the Broncos. I, mm. I thought the Dragons really hung in there yep. strongly. They just felt they, you know, they got pain hast in the last 10 minutes, oh basically. They got hoost. 
Pain like Hoost. Pain Hoost Haast. Hoost in the Haast. In the last 10 minutes. <laughs> That's what happened. And But the, ooh, I thought it was a strong showing from the Dragons. Yep. So, again, I think, you know, that last 15 minutes, the breakaway, mm. was impressive by the Broncos. So, they could be in for something special this year. I think they get the job done against the Dolphins in a real um, bang fest, nice and early too. Yeah. They're going to be getting after each other these two Oh, teams. it's going to be so good. Can you imagine, like, because it's such a young like uh, exuberant kind of foot Bronco side. If they go on a run, they'll be so loved. At mm. least at least before they get to the tall poppy syndrome. Because like if they go on a run and do really well this year, next year it'll be tall poppy. Yep. It's, it's like the Penrith Panthers boys pretty yep. much. Yep. Yep. Everyone loved Everyone them loved first them. year. Yeah, you're right. Then they were the big dogs and then everyone didn't like them because yep. they're the big dogs now. Um, whereas we're the underdogs at the moment. coming through. Yeah, um, yeah, you're right. But yeah, Broncos. Okay, now uh, Gold Coast uh, Cowboys versus the Titans at Cowboys home. Cowboys paying $1.45. 275 for the Titans. This is my Ruffy. This is your Ruffy? Yeah. I've, okay. I've, I've, uh, I've been, I think I've been on the Titans every round. So even when they lost to the Dragons, I was on them then too. Um, I like the Titans. A little bit of stability with the old boy Fozzy up there. Yep. Um, they've got so much flair and uh, I think they've really reined it in so far. We're only three games in, but they've done a good job of just <coughs> Brimo's popping up everywhere. And, so and there's Brimo. so much energy in the team. Yeah. Whenever I watch that, it's like, felt like they had that, in spurts of 10 minutes mm. in previous, especially in particular last year. But they're, you know, 30 minute stints and, you know, they still had the, you know, 10 minutes off against the Storm. Storm go bang, bang. Yep. But they got it back together and they'd found that momentum. So um, I think with a couple of the outs the Cowboys got right now, I'm going to take the Titans. Okay, okay. Uh, now here is, this is, I think, the better of the week. South Sydney Rabbitohs versus Manly, Manly paying 235. I think you get on that. I, I'm on Manly. And bias aside, I just think Manly are the better team this year right now. Right now. And right now. with South Sydney's outs as well. Yes. That's like, what I'm talking about with right now. Yeah. The middles that are out for um, some 235, like, I actually think South, uh, Manly should be favourites, honestly. So do I, Well, I think it's at least a coin flip yep. um, game for sure. Um, but, yeah, personally, if I was putting the market out, I, I would have uh, been putting Manly slight favourites as well. So there's a bit of jam for you. There's a little bit of jam there, and uh, and I can't wait to see the two big dogs go head to head. Oh, Turbo versus Trail. So good, bro. That's going to be so good Fuck, to watch. So good. They're, they're such freaks, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm trying they to don't really have the rivalry that I'd like because they're so nice. Right now, I think because they've sort of missed each other in these yeah, little windows true, as well. True, you know, true. right? Like we, Tommy's been injured a little bit. They haven't, haven't played each other in five years or something. Is that, or, well, there you go. Yeah. In five years, they haven't played I'm each pretty other. Sure. Yeah, I'm pretty so sure. They oh, that's haven't, crazy. So they haven't played what with Latrell in a South Jersey together. The last yeah. game was in 2018. There you go. And never I just I was thinking that as we were talking. I didn't yeah. know that was the case, but it felt like that. Mm. It felt like I haven't had like a Trell versus Tommy moment. Anytime I think about Trell and Tommy is when they're playing together for New South Wales, yeah, like, yeah. you know? So I can't wait to see him go head to head. Could you imagine if like Tommy turns into like a full bad boy and starts like spraying <laughs> Trell first? Because like we all expect Trell <laughs> yeah. to have a dig at him first. Yeah. Could you imagine if like Tommy starts like shirting Latrell first and yeah. like niggling him in that? That would be so funny, bro. Tommy's got that. Tommy's got a little bit of undercover Durga. Oh, him. really? Yeah, bro. Tommy's, <laughs> Tommy's got a little bit. Okay. Like I've, I've, I know a little bit. Played with his last couple. Like when I before I had left, Tommy was coming through. We played his first season was my last season, mm. and I know he's got some undercover. Okay. Durga but he won't do it like openly. Like it's not like he might just walk by and just give him a little little, little wink. Yeah, a little wink or a little tap. Or, yeah. Okay. You know, like so watch for the undercover dog. He's got subtle dog. Uh, okay, Tommy, I right? like that. Yeah. Which will unleash, will open the big dog trail. Oh, yeah, yeah, He'll yeah, get up yeah. about that. Yeah, trail. Okay. Um, Warriors versus Doggies. Warriors paying dollar eighty. Doggies paying two. Who you got here? I'm pumped for the Warriors. I, I reckon think the competition is a, is a better competition when the Warriors 100%. are playing well. Hundred percent. And some of the dogs though, they'll be disappointed the way the Tigers come back. But uh, I'm, I'm going to take the dogs in a close one just because me uh, levels network partner, Big OG, oh, Triple Big OG. OG okay. Well, I at start of the week, bro. Yeah. I went dogs. Yeah. But the more I think about it, the more I like the wires. Oh, I, yeah. oh, I don't know. Something like I don't think it's getting enough appreciation. Not only like so so Seraldo goes to docks, but he gets these massive recruits, like yeah. huge recruits in Reed Marnie, kick out, all that. Uh, Andrew Webster from the Panthers goes to the Warriors and gets, you know, I wouldn't say they're fringies that are recruited, but yep. they're not big superstars by any stretch. These solid first graders. Just solid first graders. Yep. Cleans out the roster from ball. I think it's like ten people moved on. And look at the start of the season. Yeah. I like those recruits in the sense like good, solid first graders mm. that know how to play the game. I didn't expect them to be two and three though. Like, no. don't get me wrong. And when they I, could have beaten the Roosters. Yes. Yes, they could have. Yeah. yeah the game was there to be had. Um, yeah, I just thought that they were just uh, 
they'll be a team that'll be like gritty, a little bit, you know, like the Raiders are in a way. You know, mm. Raiders just got like really solid first graders. Yep. They've got the, a dog and Jack White, who's their leader. Yeah. But they've just got really solid players across the line. And what that does is it teaches, you know, it helps instill young guys and, and, and show them the way. So they've done a good job. Oh, it, really Webster's good has been job. unreal. Yeah, because like when they recruited last year, I, was, I wasn't I was offered at all, but I was like, I don't see improvement here. Mm. Like I see the players are getting replaced by uh, like solid first graders are getting replaced by other solid first graders. But since seeing him in the trials and, and the coaching that they've received and the way they've all bought in, Tohu Harris is obviously back to his best. Yeah. You know, I'm loving it. You know, the, you know, one of the more underrated signings, the one I like the most is Tomato Martin. Because oh, so good. In particular for Shawnee Johnson. Like, Shawnee's, yeah. you know, expected to be the leader. And, you know, he had a few young guys in, uh, you know, Ronald Volkman played a little yeah. bit last year and Dijon Arce and mm. uh, a couple of these players that played for him. And when you've got a like, guy like Tomato Martin, he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, He gets sure. to play his role rather than helping a young kid or helping mm. these young kids grow into the game. So I think it's brought out the best in Shawnee, having yep. Tomato there. Agreed. Uh, Newcastle Knights, Raiders. Newey Knights paying two seventy five. Raiders dollar forty five. <sighs> this one's I reckon, is a bit tricky. Well, yeah. um, everything says Raiders because of the form and the outs that Newcastle have. Mm. But it's just Newcastle with McDonald's. And I know that it's a, it's a... It's a tough one to pick. Yeah. You'd think Raiders. You'd think Raiders for sure, but think you just Raiders. don't know what the Knights yeah, these days. you don't know, You mate. don't know. Yeah, like, they're... Raiders could go 13 plus. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that wouldn't surprise. You're right. But the Knights might turn Either up. Either team 13 plus wouldn't surprise. Yeah, because, like, the Knights might turn up and play like we all hope they would. Yeah. Like, last week, you know, I know they were missing troops, but I still think they've got a decent roster, even without those superstars. Like, mm. as in, they've got a... Uh, bot, a roster that can battle and like stay in games kind of thing so who yep. knows I'm going to go the Raiders but at home you know they got beaten last week at home maybe O'Brien is drumming into them boys this is our fortress this is where we can win but I think the Raiders get the it's job it's a done. desperation game if they don't win oh mate because then they'll be what 0-3 oh no they beat the Tigers no they beat the Tigers yeah, yeah. Um, okay now Dragons versus Sharks Dragons are 260 mm. Sharks are fifty. obviously Hines is back but they've been scratchy the Sharkies mm, yeah. real scratchy yeah Interesting to see. Um, I'm pumped, you know, got a relationship with Moise. He had on yep. to his job. But Brett, Braden Trindle was arguably the best player for the Sharks. Yeah, in the first he was weeks. gun, gun. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that combo, what sort yep. of form Nick goes in. It's sort of like the Dragons, eh? 260. Yeah, because like, like I said, like I was talking about before, I, I like the value for that. I think yeah. it's be, I feel like these games will always be close. When these two teams... You know, there have been blowout seasons in the past, but I think these two would keep it Look, close. Look, for my pick, go on Sharkies. Yep. For a bit of value, I'd go... If I'm going to chuck a sneaky 13-plus, 10-buck bet that's, yep. you know, paying quite well, yep. I'd go Dragons. Just because, like, Benny Hunt can pull something out. Yep. They were dominating the Broncos for at least 60 minutes of the game. Yep. But my, my pick is Sharkies, but a bit little, of value there. Little Jaden Sullivan and Tyrell Sloan have been good for him, haven't Sullivan's they? Sullivan's been great. Yeah. Sloan's yep. got his confidence back. Yep. Their forward pack looks... Looks like it's coming together quite well. Some young guys like Young Molo, I think, has been... Francis Molo has been yep, going well. Frankie, yep. Um, so, I, I, look, I still don't think the Dragons are going to make the eight, but they're much better than I thought they were going to be. Agreed. Much better. Agreed. Um, okay, now. Weird stories. So, basically... <clears throat> um, two men escaped jail and got found at an IHOP four hours later. Two men aged 30, 37 and 43 exploited a weakness in the jail's construction design and used tools from a toothbrush and a metal object to put a hole in the wall. Authorities asked for the public for help and patrons at IHOP called the police. They were in jail for fraud and probation violation. Uh, and the question is, where would you go if you escaped from jail? Getting out of jail, what are you doing? Have you seen Shawshank Redemption? I have, but I can barely remember yeah, it. Yeah, so it's one of the OGs. It's um, one of the goat movies. Yeah, it's one of the, it's one of the greatest of all, all time. It was in a, a really tough year, so I don't think it even won the award. But I remember uh, they sort of got out, they escaped, and they um, and they went and jumped. They went and jumped, went to the beach and went and jumped on a boat and just got away. Yeah, just got out. I think they went out to the ocean, got a little fishing boat. Yep, get away, mate. I am seriously like. I'm not going to see anyone. Yeah. I'm just getting out of yeah. there. Yeah, I don't want to go back in. Yeah. So if I want to get as far away as possible, and that's, if that's in the middle of the ocean, and you know that's where I end up, if that's where I finish up, <laughs> then so be that's it. it. That's <laughs> it. Oh, okay. Uh, Newcastle United fan left red-faced after premature tattoo. So Newcastle United 
fan Chris Cook was so convinced his club was going to win a first domestic trophy in 70 years, or nearly 70 years, he had it tattooed on his leg. He had the popular club chant, tell me ma, oh, tell me ma, me ma, tell me ma, me ma, with NUFC cup winners, 26 of the second, 23rd, tattooed onto his leg. Newcastle then lost 2-0 to Man United. <laughs> he said, I asked the lass who does my tattoos, can you put cup winners on my leg? He told the BBC. I think she was thinking it was a bad idea at the same time, but I got it done. I think my mum is still a bit livid. My grandma, she went ballistic. Apart from that, all my pals think it's funny. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why people do this. It's, <laughs> why do they do it? Why do you want to... It's like, what is in it to say, yeah, I'm the first? Nothing. It happens all the time. There's shitty like NRL ones and NBA <laughs> champs and all this sort of stuff, NFLs. Like, it makes for a good story with the boys, though. It does. It's funny. It's, <laughs> it's content for us right now. Anyway. <laughs> oh, my God. The boys will live off that. Yeah. For, for, they'll eat off that for decades yeah. to come. Yeah. Um, now, with pub debates, best breed of dog. Best breed of dog? Yeah. Um, ooh, this is tough for me. So, my missus is going to want to say our bulldog. I've, I hated him at first. Slobbery little muck little thing that yeah. i love him to death now yeah um so bulldogs are cool i grew up with two roddies when i was younger yeah and they were like so loyal and i, I loved him to death so rottweiler for me yeah okay well i would just say what my favorite dog has been it's well oh it's, my my one that i grew up was a kelpie yep real smart really loyal really cute and then i've had a few dogs uh, with different breeds so I'll just say Kelp because he's my grown up dog kind of thing. Yeah. But I had a Pekingese, Pekingese dog, yeah. half Pekingese, half Maltese. Yeah. His name was Beanie. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a fucking little legend, he's bro. The best. He was They're a the best. legend, bro. Speaking of like, you're talking about family before with your bub coming home. Dogs, they, they treat the you better than any, 100%. any life form. Mate, and I, honestly, if I, if I was rich enough to actually like just own whatever property I lived in, yeah. I'd have a dog every day of the just, week. Yeah. But the, the shit thing about Sydney is, is like most places don't take dogs. Yeah. So I don't want really to be restricted of to where I can move because of a dog. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, and you want to make sure that they've got that freedom to 100%. Like, whereas like it's fucking three grand a week to get a one bedroom with a backyard in Sydney. Yeah. So crazy, bro. I cannot believe it. The rent in Sydney is embarrassingly bad. Yeah, it's bad. It is then. so inflated, it's ridiculous. The price that we pay for our two bed units. It crazy. is ridiculous. Crazy. And just all inflated by off seas investment. Like, it's just oh, it makes me mad thinking about it um okay is it better to be seven out of ten good at everything you play your mates in ig pool darts backyard cricket or be absolutely gun amongst your friend as one thing but absolutely shit at the rest Ooh. see i think i'm that seven out of ten guy like i've got a good base at a lot of things yeah but then so yes, the middle I, of the pack I, yeah would i rather be the a dog like oh, i'm going big dog at one thing 100 yeah. 100 so, so like table tennis pool yeah so yeah, like i'd rather be bum at everything yeah, but you play yeah. me in table tennis and i'm hitting you around the court table no actually i want to be competitive at most things really yeah i'm going to stick with the okay. way it is now okay yeah. like i yeah, play basketball a little bit yeah i play um i even played rugby league a little bit yep <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. just enough to get by and play nrl i like i was never grouchy you know what i mean cheeky I, was just, games. I was basically a six out of ten nrl <laughs> player as well so i'll stay to that okay <laughs> see i was more of a, a burn bright guy yeah. and then crash and burn guy yeah. <laughs> so i'll go for the one team yeah. one team sport um is summer or winter better it's got to be I'm, summer. I'm not, a, I'm not a massive fan of the sun. Really? Yeah, not a massive fan. So I'm a summer guy. Through, I love summer. When I go outside and it's a clear sunny day, yep. my day's good. I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. It does. I'm just thinking about the good times that I had over in Europe when I lived in France and um, the UK and when we had the, the white Christmas and stuff. Um, that was cool. And then uh, we had these nice, beautiful mountains in the back of France that went, went all lit up with snow. Yeah. Just a beautiful part of the world to live. Mm. But uh, yeah, probably sun because you get out with the boys, fucking drink a few blokes. Yeah. I will say rolling through Paris in your trench coat in the cold. It's a vibe. There's something about it's it. It's a vibe, eh? Yeah. There's something that just something romantic about it. Yeah. Whereas if you're rolling around like boardies and thongs. Yeah. You, you don't feel as rom there's no romance there. Yeah, yeah. Whereas uh, you're rolling around with your trench coat, your wife's there, you're in Paddy. Yeah. You know? There's a vibe. Chuck the budgies on, there's a bit of a vibe. Yeah, fair call. Fair call. <laughs> budgies in Paddy, you reckon? Yeah, in Paddy. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, that is us done and dusted. Make sure to give Levels Network a follow on Instagram. Also, at The Scope. 
at the scope at yep. the scope on Still instagram scope. Yep. and subscribe to levels network youtube and also their podcast yourself and willie mason it is on every single uh podcasting app so make sure to subscribe guys thanks for coming on brother appreciate it appreciate it thanks for having me brother Boom. what are you really gambling with for free and confidential support visit gamblinghelponline.org.au